What's up, YouTubers? This is Ultima. I'm bringing you a new Demon Hunter build for Diablo 3, Season 3. So basically, I've been playing this Demon Hunter the last couple weeks. And I had been using the Cookie Cutter Unhollowed Essence build, which uses Evasive Fire as your generator. And, uh,. Multi shot arsenal as your as your main damage, and I I really like the build the way that multi shot you know just absolutely destroyed them with the rockets. But there was definite hatred problems. If I didn't have vengeance up, I w I would constantly be out of hatred. So I wanted to come up with a better build at Regenerating Hatred. That was my main focus. And uh, this is what I came up with. So I was going through all the primary abilities. And none of them generated more hatred than Evasive Fire Focus. Which is what everyone uses. Uh, I was looking through other abilities that can generate hatred and I found this one mark for death mortal enemy it says attacks you make against mark target generate for hatred so basically the way this works is you mark someone with mark for death and you use an ability and the proc coefficient of that ability gives you it's multiplied by the four to give you hatred. So if I use, you know, hungry and arrow, which has a proc coefficient of a hundred percent, I'd get four hatred. And so on. So that that's how that one works. So I uh I decided that I was gonna use that was part of my build, but first I had to decide what my generator was. So, I ended up getting a Crider shot a couple of days ago. Uh, it rolled really n nice range damage, but it, the other properties on it weren't optimal. So I was trying to figure out if I could incorporate it into my build. So, I find out that Immolation Arrow's proc coefficient is 50% for the damage in the AoE. So... I was able to, through Mark for Death Moral Enemy, it was able to get me four from the Crider shot, making a generator, and then I was able to get two for the initial hit, and then another four ticks of the AoE would give me a total of 14 hatred. That's that's double what Evasive Fire was giving me. And it is even give you more than if you use Night Stalker with Evasive Fire. So it just it just was give you more hatred. And on top of that, it was doing substantially better damage, like like well over triple, because it's doing 300 plus 315 is 615. Evasive Fire is only 200. So you're doing over triple. And also, since this is fire damage, it's getting buffed by your bracers and potentially your amulet that have fire percent damage on it so it's doing more damage it's doing it's give you more hatred it's it's just better than every way um, other than those two abilities the rest are pretty much all the same with uh, other unhallowed essence builds you know multi shot arsenal which actually with Mark for Death Mortal Enemy does give you about one and a half hatred and it gives you about 0.7 from from the the first shot and the rocket gives you 0.7 so it's a little bit um, companion wolf you can go boar companion for um, solo play but um, I like wolf for the group setting which is builds aim for is for groups uh, invigoration, preparation, you know, max discipline. That's um, 
that's the key to this, you know, the set, you want more max discipline. And then the defensive one, um, vault, uh, you use smoke screen, you use polar sentry, if you want to run this solo, and proc your bane of the trap, the coin of the week, but that's pretty much, that's pretty much the skills, the passives, steady aim, 20% more damage, ballistics, uh, this is going to buff your multi-shot rockets, and you're going to be shooting a lot more multi-shots now with this build, so, you know, that, that's going to help it even more. Uh, awareness, I use this because, you know, I play in hardcore, obviously, so, it, uh, it's mandatory for me, but you, I suppose if you played softcore, you could drop this for another DPS passive, but I, I like it. And then your last one is Ambush. Um, you actually want to use Coal in the Week in this last slot, but I have it on the Hellfire Amulet, so the last one you use would be Coal in the Week, and then if you have a passive on your Hellfire Amulet, you could run Ambush. That would be the next one you'd want to run. Um, the gear, obviously, you want the Crider Shot. Um, this one unfortunately rolled with only 12 ma or with no max discipline. It had like another secondary, so I had to waste my reroll on max discipline. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to roll the socket into damage on this. It would have been a lot more damage. But the key to this build is you know you want more more max discipline. So that's the, that's the key. You want that. Um, you know, all the other pieces are pretty much the same, you know, shoulders, you want resource cost reduction, helm, you want crit chance, and then if you can get it, multi-shot damage, it's nice, amulet, uh, I have a hellfire amulet, this one's pretty, pretty nasty, uh, with the crit, it, the only way it could be better is if I had a uh, fire percent damage by 20% instead of dexterity, but the other things rolled so good that, you know, I'm willing to look past that. Gloves, uh, you need crit chance, crit damage, attack speed if you want. Um, that's good too. You know, attack speed's not like game breaking for you. Chest, you want max discipline, that's the biggest key. The other stats are all defensive. Reaper rips, you want fire skills and crit chance and ancient, preferably. Um, these are pretty standard. Uh, witching hour, there's a witching hour belt. It's the highest DPS you can get. You know, you also can run um, Blackthorn's belt with the Blackthorn's amulet to get the 10% elite damage. That'd probably be pretty nice. If you get a good roll on them. Um, another belt you could use is if you want to do the solo, uh, you can get a Amaran's chain, which when you vault gives you a Caltrap. So that would crack your uh, bane of your trapped and your um, coin of the week. So that's another option if you're doing solo, but for group, highest is Witching Hour. You want focus and restraint with uh, crit chance, crit damage. Uh, attack speed's okay, I guess. Um, I haven't got a great focus yet, so. Yeah, th this one's got crit chance, crit damage. Pants, you know, high decks, you know, defensive secondaries. That's good. Um, you want multi-shot damage on the boots, you know, other than that you want, you want defensives, uh, dead man's, biggest key is the, um, the two secondaries, the 12% discipline, and multi-shot hit enemies below, blink, help twice, so you want that high as possible, 60 is the highest roll, and you can get, uh, multi-shot damage on this as well. You want crit chance, attack speed. So that's uh, 
that's basically the gear the paragons uh, your core you want to put movement speed in to get you 25% uh, if your boots give you some movement speed you know you put less into this one maximum hatred it's not necessary but I, I like it because sometimes like you get hatred wasted with um with your reaper wraps because it'll cap your hatred so I, I like having more hatred but you know you don't need it and maximum hatred are just nice and then the rest into decks you're a DPS you're not a tank you don't need to stack vitality offense um, crit chance crit damage whatever one you have less than you're gonna put into first so if you have high crit chance you're gonna put crit damage if you have high crit damage you put crit chance then you want attack speed and then cooldown I mean you don't have any cooldown except for a wolf so that's that's the last thing you're gonna maximize defense all resist number one then armor then life percent, then regen. Um, secondaries, resource cost reductions, number one. Then you're going to want area damage, then life on hit, and then gold find. So that's, that's the um, paragons. So, going over the build, there's a few pros and cons. The first, um, I'll go over the cons first. The first con is emulation arrow is a missile, so it gets it gets um it gets stopped by walls. So like wallers, it'll stop right on the wall. Doesn't have so basically, you uh, you want to position yourself well so that that doesn't hit a wall or obstacle. Another con of this build is reflect damage. Your uh, emulation arrow does an AOE with four ticks. So if if reflect pops pops up, you basically be taking a lot of damage. Uh, if you're careless, you could you could you probably proc and. If you're super reckless, you know, you might die. Um, good communication with your group and uh, quick recognition of the affixes are nice. Uh, so just just be careful. Know when he's about to pop his reflect and then stop emulation arrow for a little bit. Now, um, the pros of the build is it does a lot more damage way more damage because you're doing mul more multi shots so that's more damage your generator is doing more damage and you're giving your group damage with mark for death it's 20% so it's just it's a way to maximize your DPS in a group setting uh, so uh, that's pretty much it for the build uh, I'll show you uh, some gameplay to give you an idea of like how good the regen is, what kind of damage I'm pulling. Um, if you like the video, you know, please subscribe to me. I've got um, some I'm new at making YouTube videos, but I'll probably bring us some more vi YouTube videos in the future. Uh, thank you. And right, here's the gameplay. Just a taste. 